Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Building and Contracts Committee for Tuesday, November 10th, 2020. Baltimore County Public Schools and offices continue to be closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's amended resolution approved at the October 13th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair, in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent, may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members or in a hybrid manner with only some individual board members participating remotely, subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's Building and Contracts Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Mr. Francois, would you please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee? Ms. Hamm. Present. Ms. Rowe. Here. Ms. Matt. Present. Mr. McMillian. Yes. Ms. Pressler. I'm present. I'm not a member of the committee, though. Thank you. Mr. Francois, would you please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting? I would like to acknowledge the following staff members that are participating today. Dr. Williams, Dr. Mary McComas, Mr. Burke, present. So be quiet for a minute. Uh, Michael Dickerson, present. Margaret Ann Howie. Maria Lowry. Present. Dr. Brian Scriven. Present. Dr. Monique Wheatley Phillip. Dr. Michael Zarchi. Present. Christina Byers. Dr. Raquel Jones. Present. Dr. George Roberts. Present. Dr. Renard Adams. Present. James Corns. Present. Pete Dixit. Present. Dr. Mario Nieves. Present. George Saris. Present. Merrill Plate. Present. If there are any additional staff members that are participating that were not mentioned, please state your name. Barbara Burnop. Anne Rungfar Sangaroon. Debbie Somerville. Kathleen Causey, board member. Thank you, Mr. Francois. Before I call on Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit, committee members, may I have a motion to add item eight, Carney, Callahan, Bressler, Bennett, and Share, increase in spending authority? So moved, Matt. May I have a second? Second row. Any discussion? Mr. Francois, may I have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Hamm? Yes. 
Ms. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Thank you. The motion carries. At this time, I would like to call Mr. Saris and Mr. Dixit to come forward to present contracts one through eight. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Uh, the first item that I have is JLE 620-20, Private Duty Nurses. This is a new competitively bid contract for private duty nurses for medically fragile students in the Office of Health Services. Approval is requested for a five-year contract with the five recommended bidders uh, cited below <clears throat> and contract spending authority of $4.75 million over the five-year term. Thank you. Committee members, are there any questions? Yes, Ms. Han, this is Ms. Mack. I have a question. Go ahead, Ms. Mack. Um, Mr. Saris, did you say this is a new contract? That's correct. It replaces so an existing a, contract. Oh, okay. Is that uh, where that, the, uh, the prior spending came from? Yes. Okay, and I know Ms. Somerville is on here. I, am I understanding this correctly, that this is a nurse who will accompany students when they're at school, where are they going? Where, what is, where, what is the nurse doing for our medically fragile students? Providing services within the school or traveling with them somewhere? Yes, they're providing services within the school and typically riding to and from school with the student. So typically oh, these to are- to and from school. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Committee members, other questions? Hearing none, thank you. Next item, please, Mr. Sayers. Okay, thank you. The next item is CWA 127-20, Social Emotional Learning Readiness and Engagement Analysis. This is also a new competitively bid contract to provide for social emotional learning readiness and engagement analysis for the Department of Social Emotional Support. Approval is requested for a one-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $50,000. Thank you. Questions? Uh, Ms. Penn, I do have a question. Mr. Saris, who will be conducting the virtual classroom observations? Uh, the vendor will. Okay, it's it, it's nobody within BCPS. Correct. We are we're gaining a, a an external perspective to advise us on our program and to uh, to get input from stakeholders. Um, as we uh, develop uh, and consider changes to the program. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, any other questions? Hearing none, thank you. Next item. Okay. Uh, the next item, JME 509-21. Technology Solutions Products and Services. Uh, this is a new cooperative contract to provide learn platform software that will organize all education technology for the Department of Information Technology. Approval is requested for a three-year contract with one recommended bidder and contract spending authority of $650,000. Thank you. I have one question on this. Um, do we know which modules we are purchasing with this and the implementation plan for those modules? This may be a question for Mr. Corrins. Uh, yes, that okay. would be correct. Mr. Corrins. So, uh, Ms. Hen, uh, good evening. We are uh, implementing, hang on one second. Sorry, I was getting a bad echo here. Um, so we are implementing both the uh, Chromebook module that deploys out to do uh, 
educational technology visits so that we can get analytics collected back for where our students are going to, how frequently they're going, how much time they're spending on task. We're also utilizing the module that allows for um, the cataloging of our uh, products so that uh, we will be recording all of the, the uh, <clears throat> things that we have purchased as well as the contracts that are associated with them, any documentation as well as licensure fees and uh, the analysis that goes with that uh, information to make sure. And we're also implementing the workflow module that will allow us to um, streamline our request process so that when an office requests new software, they can push through uh, a uh, workflow and see where their process is, uh, who's involved with it, and what, what part it's, uh, what step it's on. Did that answer your question? Thank you, it did. This, this is an exciting system. I, I was very interested to read about the various modules, and that's great news that, that we're going full speed ahead with the implementation. So I'm very pleased to hear that and look forward to hearing about the progress. So thank you for that information. No problem. Committee members, other questions? I have a quick question. Mr. Corns, would this system allow, when, when during the budget cycle, when I and other board members have asked you and your staff how much is each one of these things used? Will this system allow you to more quickly and accurately capture that data? Ms. Mack, that is one component that we are working to implement with this so that we can get a uh, better analytic view. Um, and I will say that your questions, uh, uh, coupled with some of the questions that Ms. Hen has asked in the past, uh, sent us down the road to find this piece of software. Okay. Good answer. Thank you. Thank you. And and Mr. Corns, did you mention a time frame, um, roughly, for implementation? Uh, so, Ms. Hennett, we are uh, waiting board approval, and so once that occurs and our uh, and our contract process will uh, take place, um, the thing that uh, is. Um, uh, we have in Learn Platform is that we have already had a very introductory um, uh, deployment that uh, it costs uh, less than five thousand dollars to kind of uh, dip our toe in. So the implementation of this is rather um, expeditious. Uh, we should see something probably before the beginning of um, the the calendar year roll uh, as being able to um, do a lot of the pieces we're talking about with the workflows and and seeing a lot of the analytics uh, start to be collected. That's exciting. Have, have we deployed the dashboard solution they offer? I noticed that that was a free um, piece of their, their product offering, I imagine, too. We have a we have a different solution um, that we have an older contract with them. So the thing that, that we have deployed currently is a little different than the ones that are listing now. Um, so that, that free version, we, have, we haven't really touched it because we've already got the Chrome extension out on our Chromebooks doing the work to collect information. Okay, so the inventory dashboard that they um, feature on their mm -hmm. site, we, yep. that is a newer offering? It, it's, a, it's a different way to deploy the thing that we bought. It's not called dashboard. Um, it, was, it was a bundle uh, about three years ago when we started to look at this uh, just uh, cursorily. And then um, they've changed the, the name of it to this free dashboard, which is kind of that lost lead mindset of, uh, you know, give it a try and then then uh, see if you'd be interested in it. But we've already kicked the tires on this with the same kind of product or the same kind of offering. It, it was just called something different. Sure. Will we have the same functionality, though, that's featured in terms of analytics yes. of their new offerings? So yes. members will have access to it. And, and you're exactly right. When I looked at this, I thought, wow, this will answer all of the questions that, that I've had regarding the system's use of EdTech. And I immediately saw the, the value add in this. So I will be supporting approval of the contract. I just want to make sure that I was evaluating the um, apples to apples with what we have purchased or plan to purchase. Totally understand. Yep, the, that that core feature, uh, the add-ons uh, were more around the workflow, and that was the 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 the, the uh, additional feature that we were looking for. Okay, and sorry, Les, I know I said one question. This is expanded. Um, they also offer a privacy module. Is that something we plan to 
implement or have taken a look at, or is that a new offering? Can you speak to um, that? So uh, we have that that came up after the um, the con this this contract conversation, but we're in active conversations with with Learn Platform, and so they are uh, pretty amenable to uh, entering into conversations with us. We we have uh, not done a deep dive on their privacy module because of the work that we've done on our own privacy, which doesn't necessarily always align with some of the industry's um, like privacy pledges in this because we're more stringent than that. Um, but uh, but there's a there's a lot of good features in here to allow us to um, give information out to staff members as they look through um, the catalog to tell them about the privacy of edtech offerings that we have. Right, and and we've done some amazing work on privacy, so that I appreciate um, that explanation, and that's actually the the response I was expecting because I'm I'm very proud of the work your team has done on privacy. So thank you. Um, for confirming that for me. And sure, and lastly, does our contract allow us to upgrade um, to any new offerings that we may be interested in? Do we have that flexibility? It sounds as, like- As per the contract that um, uh, with Learn Platform, the, the only uh, piece that we would need to do is to come back to the board for increased spending authority if there was an additional cost to add an additional module. But the contract itself covers the procurement of Learn Platform as a product. Great. So it's broad enough for any add-ons, and we're here if you need us. So that answers my question. Thank you very much. Ms. Can Matt, I have one more question? Um, yes, Ms. Matt. Mr. Quarns, um, is this only going to capture student use? Or uh, the reason I'm asking, I know there is an analytic model in um, first in math for teachers to look at students' performance that day and make adjustments accordingly. Will this be able to see teacher usage or just student usage? Ms. Mac, this, this tool will provide a broad overview of our entire portfolio. When we get down to specific um, requests that you're speaking of now, that's still analytics that would need to be captured through the software themselves. That really deep dive on like what what um, standards were uh, addressed in a lesson, or what um, how how are students particularly mm -hmm. doing in, or what were teachers assigning out. That would still occur within a particular platform. This is more of that global oversight of all of the platform together. So we're not going to get the deep specificity on each tool as compared to a broad overview of all tools. I don't know if that helped to answer your question. Actually, or not. it causes me to have another question. So last year, when we looked at, um, you know, some individual offerings and looked at the usage, um, and initially the usage looked low, um, we made a recommendation to pull those products. So we are you saying that we would not have information at that level? Sorry, my mute button wasn't clicking right. Um, the the information that we would be receiving back is at a deeper level than what we've had before, but it's not to the, the very, very deep level and that some of your questions may be. So what I would say is I'm going to be able to answer your um, usage questions in a much more concise way, but you may okay. still have a question that we would need to return back and do a little deeper inspection on some of our stuff. So okay, uh, thank you. Iterative processes um, so that we can get more information as we move forward. Thank you very much. That's all my questions. Thank you, Ms. Mack. Committee members, other questions? Okay. Hearing none. Thank you, Mr. Corns. Next item, Mr. Uh, I believe the next four items are Mr. Dixon's. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Saris, and good afternoon to everybody. Good afternoon. So the first contract I have is for a change request for Colgate Elementary School for the electrical package. Just want to give a little bit of background. Uh, because of the COVID and some extra work that we had asked the contractor and the acceleration, we are getting close to the change order amount that board had approved for this specific contract and the chances are that it's going to be more than what you had approved only for this package. But the overall change is a lot less than what the board has approved. 
but since there is additional expense needed for electrical work, we are here to request your approval. The project is, project is complete and it's a beautiful looking building. Thank you. Committee members, questions? Ms. Rowe? Hi, Mr. Dixit. Um, I would just like to know if you could expand a little bit on what the electrical work was that was needed that caused us to go over the contingency amount. Primarily, it was the acceleration of work. And then in addition to that, uh, there have been additional requirement from the county's electrical inspector. And whenever there is additional requirement, we support it. We support it for the safety of students, but they were not included in the original contract. Had it not been for the acceleration, we would have done that within the board approved contingency amount. But since there was acceleration on top of that, we exceeded the contingency. And it so happens sometimes, not a lot of times, of all the other contract, we had a total of about 10 contract. This is the only one that exceeded contingency. So are you adjusting other contracts and other um, work expectations and those projects that we have to account for the things that the county wanted done that you did not anticipate originally? Yes. So the funding for that, these, this additional work will come out of the savings of other contingencies. <clears throat> but I still need board's approval to change the amount for this contract. I see. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Mack, is your hand up? Did you? Okay. Board members, other questions? Ms. Causey? Is your hand up? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. So my question Can you hear me? Yes. So, my question is um, regarding the change order. Is there documentation that outlines the um, costs attributed to acceleration and the costs attributed to extra um, features, if you will, that the um, that the uh, officials are made suggestions around? Is there is there written documentation for that? It, it's a good question, and let me try to answer that. Each change order that is submitted is reviewed by, uh, by the consulting engineer, by our project manager, and our engineering team. And each change order is reviewed and approved based on the merit of the request. If the change order request, according to our process, is over and above what is included in the design and technical specification, then an agreed amount based on our consultant's review and our internal projects manager's review is, uh, is approved. And this is true for every change order. And uh, these, these change orders, uh, the entire system is reviewed. We are subject to reviews by different auditors. So we are very careful that it is documented and, uh, and, and, and the project is, is, is per the process that we have developed. Okay, thank you. And so there is a process, so there's already documentation that has gone through an approval process, as you were mentioning, with the project managers and so forth, so that all of that is available. Yes, ma'am, that's true. Every, every change order goes through a process, and that is, that is open. Anybody can audit Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions, board members? Hearing none, thank you. Next item, Mr. Dixit. The next item is KSH 317-17 and is for construction testing and inspection services. This is to extend the date of the contract. There is no additional money required. Date being it based on the contract on which we are piggybacking. And then once that contract expires, 
we'll create a, our own contract and come to you. Okay. Questions, board members? Okay. Hearing none, thank you. Next item, please. Item PCR 295-11 for liquid propane gas. We in Baltimore County Public Schools use propane gas at few locations, about eight for their primarily uh, shop satellite location or science lab in high school. So this contract will give us the authority to purchase propane gas. Questions, board members? Okay. Thank you. And the next contract is ASI 801-21 for fencing supplies. This is routine contract for fence repairs. And our cost estimate are based on the past usage. And it gives us the ability to repair fences that you see throughout the school system. Board members, any questions? Okay. Hearing none, thank you, Mr. Dixit. Thank you very much and have a nice evening. You as well. And I believe we have and one it's last back item. to me, I think, uh, for the last item. And that is MWE 803-21 Legal Services. Uh, this is a contract modification to provide for the continuation of legal services for the Board of Education. Approval is requested to increase contract spending authority by $25,000, bringing the revised total contract spending authority to $49,999 with the uh, one awarded vendor approved by the Board in July 2020. Thank you. Board members, are there any questions? Ms. Rowe? Yes, I just wanted to know if this um, change in spending authority is the result of uh, utilizing more of their services while we um, hire a, a primary services. Yes, that is exactly correct. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Causey? Thank you, Ms. Hen. So I just wanted to clarify that this is a increase in spending authority of the purchase order. It's not changing any of the terms of the contract. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. And I, I do want to point out that uh, some years ago, the uh, the state of Maryland increased the threshold of what are termed small procurements from twenty five thousand to fifty thousand dollars, and so um, what we what we will do is we will uh, amend our procedures now to match uh, the state procurement. Uh, threshold of $50,000, and that will allow us to proceed in this manner um, until we have the opportunity to uh, to do a, a competitive bid. And uh, I understand we're going to speak about that later today. That's correct. And I would caution Thank the committee you. members that that is not a discussion that we can post in this this session. Thank you, Ms. Hen. I did just have a follow up question for Mr. Saris. Yes. When Mrs. did the state? When did the state change the um, small purchase amount from twenty five thousand to fifty thousand? It, it was either twenty fourteen or twenty sixteen. Um, let me see if I have it handy here. Um, it's been a number of years. Um, uh, 
I will get you that information um, shortly, but I just don't have that up on my screen. And uh, but I do have access to the code, so I'll do that research. Certainly, and I and um, just what is the distinction of what is um, allowed below fifty thousand versus what is now um, required over fifty thousand? Okay, thank you. Sure. It's uh, section 13-109 of the procurement article. Thank you, Mr. Sarek. You're welcome. Ms. Rowe, is your hand back up? Oh. Sorry, I forgot to take it down. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, committee members? Hearing none. That was our final item. Um, board members, do I have a motion to recommend items one through eight to the full board for approval? So moved, Roe. May so I have Mac? Thank you, Ms. Roe and Ms. Mack. Any discussion? May I have a roll call vote, Mr. Francois? Ms. Hinn? Yes. Ms. Roe? Yes. Ms. Mack? Yes. Mr. McMillian? Yes. Yeah. The motion carries. Is there any further business? Since there's no further business, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone.